I missed having a friends with benefits situation. Which might sound depressing, but I actually think it's good. Boys, 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 right. Uh, Tom, it would seem to me, right, that it is cope, right? Boys, something's going on with dating, you know? Don't you feel it? They don't make them like they used to, you know? You don't meet somebody at a bus stop and say, hey, get in my car, you know? Stop squirming. The situation, the situation regarding uh, feminism, it's like really bad. I wonder if you could do a Morty Jordan Peterson. What, what, uh, Rick? It's like, seriously, Rick, I don't understand the nature of me of metaphysical realities in terms We're of- We're gonna investigate the question today. Why do feminists think that casual sex is empowering? And I was beginning to think that he was like all the other men I've dated, but then he actually showed up. And after one drink, we went back to his flat for a takeaway and a movie, and we also had sex, and it was the best I ever had. I told him how much I liked him, but that is when he told me that he only saw me as a friend to have sex with. And he added that he wasn't sure if a relationship with me would work. I was gutted. But I didn't want to lose him, so I agreed to being sex buddies. I've been in similar arrangements before, but I've never fallen so hard for a man. The guy is just perfect. So when he moved jobs and avoided me for a month, I was heartbroken. And when he finally called, I told him I felt like I wasn't good enough for him, but he disagreed. He then suggested that we meet up again as sex buddies. I've said yes, but my heart just isn't in it. He's so special to me. Am I just wasting my time? Yeah, this is sad. You go to therapy. Go see a good therapist. My therapist is dead. She's so good. I didn't even care. Okay, so part of the problem here is that a lot of feminists nowadays don't understand the distinction between admiration and attraction. So David Buss from the University of Texas did a study and he found that if you ask men to rate the traits that they find most attractive, they'll list things like youthfulness, facial symmetry, and body shape as the most important. But if you ask women, they'll rate things like emotional stability, confidence, and ambition. Ben Hammett put it like this, it seems that men tend to select traits such as attractiveness, youth and body shape, and size, suggesting a preference for uncontrollable qualities. This, however, differs from what females focus on, which are traits that are thought to be controlled, such as status, ambition, job prospects, and physical strength. So women's attractiveness tends to be inherent. Men's attractiveness tends to be extrinsic. And this is where we get into the part that most women don't understand about most men, which is that for men, attractiveness and admiration do tend to vary independently. There's a correlation, there's an overlap, but they are separate categories. For women, the things that they find attractive are admirable traits. So it's not the case that all admirable people are attractive for women, but it is the case that all attractive people are admirable for women. So a woman might look at a guy and find him attractive because of his sense of humor, because of his confidence, because of his ambition, because of the amount of money he makes, or the fact that he works hard, or the fact that he's educated. But these things are not largely correlated with what men find attractive. Men tend to find intrinsic qualities attractive, like youthfulness and facial symmetry, etc. So this is part of what's going on with the story at the beginning, where the girl's trying to figure out what What's going on in his head? Why does he seem attracted to me, but he doesn't admire me enough to actually want a relationship? And that's what's going on. These two things very independently with men, such that a man can want to have sex with you, but not want a relationship with you at all. It's kind of sad, actually, for you guys, not for me. I'm married. I'm so married. I'm so married. Hey, baby. Hello. Hello. Are we going to have pizza tonight and watch a show? Oh yeah. Nobody's more married than me. Everyone's saying, wow, we've never seen someone married like this. Wow. Okay, let's look at a clip. I've been having a sexual relationship with a coworker for about two months now. For you. <laughs> I mentioned to him that I missed having a friends with benefits situation. And later that night, he told me he was interested in being that for me. What a nice guy. Wow. He's, he should work for a charity, you know, making all these donations. Oh, oh shit. Love it. Yeah, she's getting it. So Very far, A plus, yeah. A plus, plus. Yeah. Our lives are based in rejection. Every day is a new rejection. <laughs> yeah. Every day. Yeah. Someone doesn't and like you. New levels of it yeah. sucking. But yeah. it, it makes you... it matter a lot less, though. Mm -hmm. it, it, like, it, mm -hmm. it makes you, you have, like, thicker skin, but it, you just care less. Like, I just get less invested in the thing I have my high hopes about. Like, I, which might sound depressing, but I actually think it's good. Is this cope? Yes. Oh. There you go. Like I just, it, I'm not sobbing every time something doesn't work out. I'm like, oh, okay, that happens all the time. It just takes it off your, you know, shoulders as being like, this has to be the perfect thing. All of the things that you did, that's great. You went after what you said, what you wanted. You got what you wanted, and then you had a nice experience where you were sexually free. It sounds like, right? Mm -hmm. It sounded amazing. Everything you said is awesome. Like that is female empowerment. 
You know what I mean? Like, so just don't let that skate by. Like you, you, you had feelings. You told him how you felt. You're a big girl. He didn't reciprocate. That's all okay. But you still, you know what I mean? Like you did all of the things that you should, that a woman who is empowered would do. This man is treating her like a condom. Use, throw out, use, throw out. And you're saying, this is great, female empowerment. Like, this is awesome. Everything you're saying is so good. Mm -hmm. It sounded amazing. Everything you said is awesome. Okay, so why is there this mismatch, right? Why does it seem so obvious that this girl's being played, this girl's being duped, and yet Chelsea Handler is saying, no, you're being empowered, you're doing the great thing, this is wonderful, this is amazing. Everything you said is awesome. I think the problem here is this, it's a failure of cross-sex mind reading, where women only have casual sex with men that they admire. And so she thinks, if I'm having casual sex with someone, it's because he admires me. The same is not true for men. Men only have commitment-free sex with women that they do not admire. And this is why in our subconscious minds, if we want to insult a girl, we'll call her a we'll call her a will say things about her sexual promiscuity and this would infer a kind of low status on her. Whereas if you said the same thing about a man, it would be almost a compliment. Like, oh, that guy's a stud. Right? So this is why promiscuity is seen as a high status thing in guys, but a low status thing in girls is because of this mismatch of admiration. And this is what Chelsea Handler is missing. It's like, if he treats you like a gas station, it means that you're a pit stop on the way to the thing that he actually wants. There's a great article about this by Bridget Phetasy called I Regret Being a and this is absolutely insightful. Check this out. I was first inspired to write this piece when a 19-year-old woman I used to wait tables on asked me, Bridget, have you ever regretted having sex with a man? I laughed. Yeah, all of them. That's not entirely true. There was my first love in high school and my first husband. But if I'm honest, of the dozens of men that I've been with, or at least the ones I remember, I can only think of a handful that I don't regret. The rest I would put in the category of casual, which I would define as sex that is either meaningless or mediocre or both. If I get really honest with myself, I'd say most of these usually drunken encounters left me feeling empty and demoralized and worthless. I wouldn't have said that at the time though. At the time I would have told you that I was liberated even though I tried to drink away this sick feeling of rejection when my most recent hookup didn't call me back. A lifetime of allowing myself to be the other woman taken for granted and treated like a doormat under the false pretense of being empowered came to a head one night with the arrival of a text message from an on again off again lover. Good night baby, I love you, it said, quickly followed by wrong person. Rock bottom doesn't always look like losing everything or ending up in jail. There's this belief in our culture that women can have casual sex. They can't. They can only have calloused sex. As you hook up with more and more people, you're not developing a thicker skin. You're developing a harder heart that doesn't stick to people when they leave you. So the culture comes along and says, well, body count is an indicator of experience. You don't want to be naive and inexperienced, do you? And it's like, well, it's not an indicator of experience. It's a predictor of dissatisfaction. When I walk into McDonald's and I can pick between hot fudge, caramel, or strawberry, I'm happy with my choice, but when I walk into an ice cream store with 150 flavors and I'm testing this one and then testing that one and then testing the other one, I am never satisfied with my choice. I always have this creeping feeling like I probably could have gotten a better flavor if I had just stuck around for longer. And this is the reason why, according to the Institute for Family Studies, two virgins getting married have the greatest chance of having the highest marital satisfaction and the lowest rate of divorce because they have nothing else to compare to. And this is a real problem for women because the kind of guys that would hook up with you are gonna be significantly more attractive than the kind of guys who'd be willing to marry you. So you're inevitably setting yourself up for disappointment because the kind of guy that you think you deserve is just the guy that was willing to hook up with you, not the guy who would be willing to put a ring on your finger. So yeah, it's sort of a disaster all around, really. Hookup culture is like turning everyone's hearts into old Velcro. You wouldn't trust anything to stick to it. <music> Remember the good old days when you used to play Minecraft in the living room on the family computer? Mine in a way, building a little house, you know, get blown up by a creeper, you gotta rebuild it. If you remember back to the feeling of switching into creative mode for the first time, and you have access to all the blocks, and you can fly everywhere and do anything and nothing can hurt you, and you're spawning in different creatures, and you're building stuff, and nothing costs anything, and there's no effect to you, and then this creeping feeling comes, this meaninglessness, this boredom starts to sit on you like a blanket, and so you quit the creative 
creative world and you go back to your survival world where things can hurt you and where everything costs something and where you can't fly around endlessly. And while in creative, you could play for 10 minutes without getting bored, in survival, you could play for 10 hours without getting bored because there's meaning there. There's a spirit of adventure. On the one hand, in creative, there is greater power. On the other hand, survival gives you difficult but meaningful progression towards a goal. Here's the reason why I say this. The modern day radical feminist believes that empowerment will make them feel happier because of the greater access to choice and freedom. But does food from a restaurant taste better than food from a buffet? When I was a kid, I used to have three DVDs that I would watch in the back of my grandpa's van. One of them was The Wiggles, one of them was Ice Age, and one of them was that movie where the guy jumps into the pool and turns blue. I was happy as a clam. Now me and my wife go on Netflix, there's 6,600 titles. I'm so dissatisfied every time we start watching something because I think, ah, there could have been something better that we might have missed. Haven't you ever been to in and out there's like two things on the menu. We think that we want choice. We don't want choice. We want meaning. And here's the thing that the radical feminists are missing is that the admiration that you get from people who don't love you doesn't mean anything. I spent a lot of time in my life in Latin America, visiting churches, learning Spanish, etc. Can I tell you something? When you walk into some rusty tin concrete skeleton of a building with 20 people singing old hymns on tattered hymn books and you get in a car and you drive to your place and then you drive all the way back through the hills and the forest forest and the jungle to the airport and then you get on the airplane, you get all the way back to America and you drink a latte that costs more than the monthly salary of the guy that you were just visiting a day ago. You don't feel like how you think you're going to feel. You don't feel like Bezos. You don't feel like Musk. You're not, you, you're not Kim Kardashian. You're not like, dang, you know, look at all these peasants. It doesn't feel good. It makes you feel gross. It makes you feel like you don't deserve it. It makes you feel like, wow, raw power and status is completely overrated. And if some taxi driver in the middle of Cuba starts talking to me as if I've got a lot of money, that doesn't mean much to me compared to what my wife thinks of me, for example, or what my siblings think of me, or what my grandparents think of me, or the people at church. The point that I'm trying to make here is this. Admiration isn't love, and it won't make you happy, so don't sacrifice relationships for status. C.S. Lewis put it like this, admiration and appreciation are often mistaken for love. But love is something far deeper. It is the state of that will which enables us to reach far beyond admiration and move towards genuine affection and sacrifice. So this is what I'm trying to get at is that people like Chelsea Handler and a lot of the radical feminists will lie to young women and say that it's not worth it to have kids, have a family, get married, start a relationship. Instead, sleep with hot guys and then everyone will see you as empowered and high status. 99% of any meaningful or lasting happiness that you ever experience in your life will be the result of your relationship to other people. In my case, you wanna know where most of my happiness comes from? It comes from the fact that my wife sees me as the best person in the entire world. You know what? That's good enough for me. My wife is completely loyal to me. We struggle through things together. We go through hard times. We go through good times. I treat her very well. She treats me very well. We honor each other and speak well of each other in front of other people. There is no plastic surgery, no money, no fame, no nothing that you could trade me for that feeling. So yeah, don't have casual sex. Be with someone that admires you. Marry somebody that you love or don't. You know, what do I care? Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, do a bell thingy. And please give me your thoughts down below. I would love to hear your stories about these things. If you've had experience with the topics that I'm discussing, I want to know what you think. And if you differ from my opinion, that's no problem. Let me know. Love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. And I try to fall for a touch, but I'm thinking of the way that it was.